Welcome to Excel Basics video number 18. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about the define name feature and use define names in Excel formulas, functions, and for jump go to. Now, we're going to learn how to name ranges and then use those names in formulas. We'll see our list of names in the name manager. And we'll also see how to use define names to jump to various ledger accounts in your Excel workbook. Now let's go over to the sheet, define names. Now define names sometimes are great. We're going to use the PMT function to calculate our monthly payment. But inside our formula, it would be nice Instead of seeing B3, B4, B5, it would be nice to see the name of the variable. Now, define names. You can actually select a range or a single cell and name it anything you want. Now, I'm going to click in B3. And up here in the formula bar is the name box. If I click, I can type any name. And now that cell will have that name instead of B3. Now I'm going to type loan amount, but guess what? Spaces will not work. Now if you want a space, you have to use an underscore. Now when I hit Enter, that cell is named. If I click over here, I see C5. When I click back there, I see loan amount. If I click in a cell and click the drop down and select loan amount, it jumps to that cell. Now I'm going to show you where your list of defined names are. We go up to Formula, Define Names, and there it is, Name Manager. There is a keyboard. There it is, Control-F3. Now if I click this, it will show me that we only have one name. There's the name. There's the value. There's the range it refers to and scope. If you have the same name in multiple places in your workbook, when you insert the name, it'll ask you whether you want to use the one from the workbook or the particular worksheet. All right, I'm going to delete this. By the way, you can edit, create a new one here, but I'm going to delete it because I've got to show you a better trick than naming them manually. Click OK. Click Close. Almost all times that I've used to find names, I have the actual name directly to the left. And so there's a feature that will automatically name these. Not only that, but when we get down here, this whole column has the name at the top. So there's a great feature. You highlight the names and any numbers or any cells that you want to contain those names. Go up to Define Names, and there it is, Create From Selection. There is a keyboard. There it is, Control-Shift F3. I'm going to use Create From Selection. Now you got to be careful. You've got to read this, because sometimes they'll check the wrong box. But this has no problem interpreting number, 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 and this is text. Now the polite thing about create names from selection is notice space, space, it will automatically put an underscore. Right there, I didn't put a space, so it will be exactly that name. When I click OK, now up in the drop down, there's my loan underscore amount. There is the total months. Now I can come down here and use those defined names in a formula equals PMT. We learned this function earlier in the class. Great for calculating a period loan. The rate, I'm simply going to click and look at that. It puts monthly rate, comma. That's the total number of periods. I click on total months, comma, and I click loan amount. And that's a pretty awesome formula. If I close parentheses, someone looking at this can literally read it left to right and understand what's going on. When I hit Enter, there is the monthly payment. Now, one other cool thing about Define Names, I can come up to the Name Manager. And I want to be consistent with an underscore, so I'm going to click on Total Months, Edit. And now when I come up and add an underscore, click OK, click Close, I don't get an error there, F2, it'll totally update. Now let's come down here. I want to name these three columns. So I'm highlighting the names at the top and all of the data below. It will interpret the whole column as date, the whole column as sales. Create from selection, or you can use your keyboard Control-Shift-F3. Now be careful. 
it definitely checks the wrong thing sometime. I do not want the left column, meaning each one of these dates, to be the name of this row. So I simply make sure top row is selected and click OK. Now I can come over to my drop down, and sure enough, there is sales. Now there is a drawback to define names. They're not dynamic like the Excel table feature. If I add new records, it won't automatically update. You can go edit it, but it won't update like an Excel table. If I'm using data sets like this, I tend to use the Excel table feature now. But I got to show you define names because this example up here is a great use that we still use all the time. And this one, you may bump into spreadsheets where people use define names. So it's good to know what they are and how to use them. All right, our goal here is to add with the sum ifs function. I need to add not all the sales, but the sales just for Joe, Gigi, and Chin. In the sum range, I'm either going to highlight the column, and notice it'll automatically put the define name in, or comma, criteria range. I know I want sales rep. I can start typing. And from my drop down, I can see the f of x. That means function. Gold dog tag, that means define name. You also will see the table icon and table names in this drop down, as we saw in an earlier video. Now I'm going to down arrow and tab to get sales rep. Now I type a comma and criteria 1. I left arrow to get the criteria for adding. Close parentheses. And there it is, define names in formulas. Not only that, but they're totally locked and absolute by default. So when I Control Enter and copy it down, go to the last cell and hit F2, they are totally locked, pointing to the correct sales and sales rep column. Enter. Another great use for defined names, and for that matter, the table feature with its table formula nomenclature, is I'm going to use this column over and over again. So instead of always having to do my different formulas and highlight the range, I can simply use our define name. Alt equals, keyboard for the sum function, I type the letter S, I see sales highlighted in my drop down, tab, and enter equals count. I want to count how many sales we had. S, I see it there, sales, so I hit tab. Now here's a great trick. This is a simple function with a single argument. We actually don't have to type the closed parentheses. If I Control Enter and look up in the formula bar, you can see it totally put it in for us. Enter equals, I need to find the biggest one, so I use max. S, tab. I'm going to hit Enter, and it will put that parentheses in for me. And sure enough, it got the max. Equals min tab, S tab, and Enter. So I've used define names to quickly enter a range when I'm doing various calculations. Now, our last example, I love this example. I use it all the time in large workbooks. Here we want to use define names to jump to a certain ledger account. Over here, I have the cash account, AR, sales. And for each one of these, I want to give whatever cell a particular name so I can use the drop down in the define names box to jump to a particular range. Now I'm going to select J1 on each one of these sheets. Click up in the name box, and I'm going to call this one cash and enter. Now I'm going to jump over to AR, click in J1, click up in the name box, AR, enter. Come over to Sales. I already have a range called Sales. So I'm going to come over here, click in the name box, and call this Sales 400, because that's the number on this account, and enter. Now notice I'm on the Sales sheet. If I want to jump to the cash account, I simply select it, and instantly I jump over to cash. Jump to AR. There I am on AR. If I want to jump back to that define name sheet where we started, and I want to jump to the sales rep column, I simply click it, and there I have jumped to this define name. All right, we saw how to create define names in formulas using the awesome Create From Selection. 
we saw that it's sometimes convenient to have our cells named in our formula. We also saw how to name each one of these columns and then use it in some ifs. We also saw that either define names or table formula nomenclature from the table feature is great when you're using the same range over and over. We also talked about the limitation of define names. They're not dynamic, although you can go up and edit them if you have to. And then we saw the define names to jump to a certain ledger account. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. We'll see you next Excel Basics video.